What's going on everyone? This is Fred, Fredian.com, and today we're going to build a Litecoin miner. Alright, so here are all the parts that you need to build your own Litecoin miner. Now keep in mind that you do have a lot of different options in regards to parts. The ones that I have here are just what I chose at this time based off of the availability and the price. Now one advice that I can give you is that if you are seriously considering building your own Litecoin miner is to go out and buy those parts immediately. Because of the popularity of mining, a lot of these parts are in high demand with low supply. And they are becoming very difficult to find at a reasonable price. So go out and get your parts now. Now we'll go through each part one by one and I'll also place some links down below so that you can get started on your project. So the most important piece of hardware that you need for your mining rig is its graphics card, also known as the GPU. Now what I have here is the Radeon 7850, which actually isn't the best card to use. The best card currently out on the market is the 7950 or the R9 280. However, those two cards are becoming extremely difficult to find and are a lot more expensive than this card here. So this card does give me around 350 kilohashes per second, and I have three of these. So I should be mining around one mega hash per second. Another crucial piece of hardware that you need is a power supply. Now do not cheap out on this. This one is a Corsair RM750, and it is gold rated, which means it's gonna be very efficient on power consumption. Now this should be more than enough to power my three GPUs. So definitely pick a good power supply. Next up is the motherboard. This is an ASRock 990 FX Extreme 3 motherboard. Now the reason why I chose this motherboard is because it does include three PCI Express 16X slots, meaning I can run three GPUs on this motherboard. Now the nice thing about this is it also has a 1X PCI Express slot. What that means is I can get a 1X to 16X converter cable if I want to add on a fourth card. And that's very important when deciding on which motherboard to choose. You have to figure out how many GPUs you plan on running and making sure that the motherboard can support it. And to go along with our motherboard, I have an AMD Sempron 145 CPU. Now this is not a powerful processor at all, which is perfect, we don't need one. What's doing all the work in your mining rig is the GPUs. Now this processor consumes very little power and will actually save you money in the long run. Now you'll also need at least four gigabytes of RAM. Now this is just your standard DDR3 memory. There's nothing special about this one. Now depending on what operating system you choose, whether you go with Windows or Linux, you'll need some type of hard drive. Now with Windows, you'll probably want to find the cheapest hard drive that you can. But if you go with Linux, you can actually load the entire OS onto a thumb drive. You will need at least eight gigabytes if you go that route. You'll need to find some way to connect to the internet. Now you could just use one of these USB adapters or you could just use an ethernet and connect it directly to your modem. The motherboard that I chose does not come with a power switch, so it may be a good idea for you to pick one up. And finally, you wanna get some 68 ohm resistors. Now this is to make some dummy plugs for your GPUs. I'll explain more on that later, but you'll need three resistors for every GPU that you use that you will not have a monitor hooked up. Okay, so that's all that you need. Let's start putting everything together, starting with the CPU and motherboard. The first thing that we do is install the CPU. As you can see, on the top right corner, there's a gold arrow. Now that matches up with an arrow on the motherboard. Just lift up this lever, place the CPU down, and push down the lever. This is the heat sink. It does come with the CPU. So just go ahead and place this on top and clamp it down. And next take the fan's power cable and connect it to the motherboard where it says CPU fan like so. Take your DDR3 memory and place it in the first memory slot closest to the CPU. Just move these hooks out of the way and insert the memory. Making sure it snaps and you're good. 
Now we can install the GPUs in their PCI slots. And lock this tab on the end. Insert the next one. And go ahead and install the third and final card. Okay, so here's something that you need to take note of. As you can see, the GPU 1 and 2, there's a good amount of room between both cards. However, between 2 and 3, the spacing is actually pretty tight. Now, depending on the hardware that you decide to use, this could cause some overheating issues. Now, with my particular setup, I don't think I'm gonna run into any problems because I am gonna have a box fan blow across all the cards, so that should keep everything pretty cool. Now, another option that you can choose, which is very popular, is to put this entire setup in a milk crate. Now, the way you would do that is that you would need to get riser cables for each one of these cards. This will allow you to lift all the cards up above the motherboard, giving it extra airflow. Now, I am gonna eventually transition into that milk crate setup. However, I am still waiting on my riser cables. But until I get those cables, running it like this with a box fan blowing across all the cards should be perfectly fine. But that's something that you should definitely keep an eye on and monitor. Now, once you have all the cards installed, you could go ahead and plug in your Wi-Fi adapter in your USB drive. Now again, I'm going with Linux and that's why I can use an eight gigabyte USB drive. However, if you're going with Windows, this is the time that you wanna install your hard drive. Now I'm gonna first insert my Wi-Fi adapter, then my USB drive. Now bring in our power supply. We can now start plugging in the power cables. The main motherboard power connection is right here by the RAM. And each one of our GPUs requires a six pin PCI power connector. And just follow your motherboard's user guide for the correct way to install the power and reset switch. Okay, so the final step that you need to do before powering up is to insert these dummy plugs. Now, depending on the operating system that you're using, some operating systems will disable the GPUs that do not have a monitor connected to them. So by making these dummy plugs and inserting them into the GPU connections, this will trick the operating system into thinking you do have a monitor plugged in. Now, these connectors come with your graphics cards. It's just a VGA uh, adapter, and all you need to do is plug in the 68 ohms uh, resistors. Just take these, plug it into your GPU, and you should be ready to go. All right, your mining rig is now fully assembled. Everything should be plugged in and ready to be powered on. All you have to do now is install your mining software and start mining for Litecoins. Okay, so that should give you a good idea on how to assemble your own Litecoin mining rig. Now, one thing that I did forget to show was connecting the power supply to the CPU. So just make sure that you hook that up. Now I want to give you a look at the performance that I'm getting with my mining rig. So I have my phone right here and I'm just connected remotely and I'll give you a close up look right now. Alright, so as you can see I am hashing at just below 1 mega hash per second. Now the reason why it's below 1 mega hash is because if you look to the right I have decreased the intensity on the second GPU. Now that second GPU is running slightly hotter than the other two and that's because of the tight spacing that I mentioned earlier. So I did order the riser cables. They are on its way, and once I get those, I should be able to decrease the temperature and easily mine at over one mega hash. So once I do get those riser cables, I will be able to transition everything into a milk crate, and I'll make another video showing you how to do that. But this will give me better airflow and allow me to increase the intensity on all my cards, which will yield more hashing power. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can get better parts out there, but they do come at a higher price, and you'll probably need to upgrade your power supply as well. But regardless of what parts you choose, the assembly of your mining rig is the same. So hopefully this video has helped you out. I'll see you on the next video, and thanks for watching.
check out the shirt that my girlfriend got me.